I turned from the window and faced the girl and for a while we sat in silence. You have an interesting face, I remarked. I was becoming quite daring but it was a safe remark. Few girls can resist flattery. She laughed pleasantly, a clear ringing laugh. It's nice to be told I have an interesting face. I am tired of people telling me I have a pretty face. Oh, so you do have a pretty face, thought I. And aloud I said, well, an interesting face can also be pretty. You are a very gallant young man, she said. But why are you so serious? I thought then that I would try to laugh for her but the thought of laughter only made me feel troubled and lonely. We'll be soon at your station, I said. Thank goodness, it's a short journey. I can't bear to sit in a train for more than two or three hours. Yet I was prepared to sit there for almost any length of time just to listen to her talking. Her voice had the sparkle of a mountain stream. As soon as she left the train, she would forget our brief encounter. But it would stay with me for the rest of the journey and for some time after. The engine's whistle shrieked. The carriage wheels changed their sound and rhythm. The girl got up and began to collect her things. I wondered if she wore her hair in a bun or if it was plaited. Perhaps it was hanging loose over her shoulders. Or was it cut very short? The train drew slowly into the station. Outside there was the shouting of porters and vendors and a high-pitched female voice near the carriage door. That voice must have belonged to the girl's aunt. Goodbye, the girl said. She was standing very close to me, so close that the perfume from her hair was tantalizing. I wanted to raise my hand and touch her hair, but she moved away. Only the scent of perfume still lingered where she had stood. There was some confusion in the doorway. A man getting into the compartment stammered an apology. Then the door banged and the world was shut out again. I returned to my berth. The guard blew his whistle and we moved off. Once again, I had a game to play and a new fellow traveller. The train gathered speed. The wheels took up their song. The carriage groaned and shook. I found the window and sat in front of it, staring into the daylight that was darkness for me. So many things were happening outside the window. It could be a fascinating game guessing what went on out there. The man who had entered the compartment broke into my reverie. You must be disappointed, he said. I am not nearly as attractive a travelling companion as the one who just left. She was an interesting girl, I said. Can you tell me, did she keep her hair long or short? I don't remember, he said, sounding puzzled. It was her eyes I noticed, not her hair. She had beautiful eyes, but they were of no use to her. She was completely blind. Didn't you notice?